One by drivetrains. We first saw them on mountain bikes and then on specialist applications like cyclocross and TT bikes, and then increasingly on adventure, gravel, and all rounder bikes such as this Orbea Terra. But what do you need to know in order to set up a one by drivetrain correctly? Well, in this video, we're going to show you. When it comes to setting up a single ring one by group set, many of the steps are exactly the same as a regular group set, especially the shifters, the bottom bracket, the chain set, and the brake setup. Where it tends to differ is the rear mech, and that's what we're gonna focus on. And we're also gonna explain some of the nuances between Shimano, SRAM, and Campagnolo. First up, these are the tools that we would recommend for the job. Allen keys, a T25 Torx key a torque wrench so that you can get everything torqued up correctly, cable cutters and a chain splitter. Bonus tools would be quick link pliers and a quick link for your chain. I'm going to explain some of the key differences between a one by group set like this and a normal two by or even well three by group set as this will help when you start maintaining it if you understand it a bit better. So the most obvious difference is the fact that you only have one chain ring at the front instead of two or three. And this makes the system much easier to set up because you don't have to mess about with a front derailleur. It does mean though that you need to pay particular attention to the chain tension and the chain length as you don't have a front derailleur to hold that chain and guide it in place it can mean it's easier to drop it when you're traveling over rough terrain or in cyclocross situations if it's not set up correctly you also have a special chain ring on the front with narrow wide teeth on there and this also helps keep the chain in place in those rough situations another reason can be weight and it's for this reason that i've sometimes seen specialist hill climb bikes run a one by setup in a bid to save precious grams but generally i find that there isn't actually that big a difference in weight between most conventional one by and two by setups and that's because although you do save weight by removing a chain ring from the front you reintroduce weight into the system by having to use this massive cassette at the back to get the same or equivalent spread of gears. Also, the rear mech is more substantial and this adds more weight as well. And although you do remove the shifter gubbins out of the, the left-hand shifter, that doesn't actually weigh that much. So the difference between a sort of equivalent level Ultegra uh, two by system and a one by system such as this GRX isn't actually much at all. Another key difference is the use of stabilizers or clutches on the rear derailleurs. The idea behind these is that when they're engaged, they increase the amount of force required to pull that cage on the rear derailleur forwards and make the chain slack. By doing this, you can maintain a tighter chain when going over rough terrain. And again, there's less risk of it dropping off or slapping around on the chainstay. SRAM pioneered this technology with the use of clutches, they now call them orbital stabilizers, and they also have their cage lock system, which you can engage to lock the rear derailleur, which helps insertion um, and removal of your rear wheel more easily and keeps the derailleur out of the way. Shimano, such as this GRX, has a clutch lever that you can turn on and off, and the new Campagnolo e-car also has uh, a clutch built into it too, with a sort of cage lock system as well. Now for those of you interested in perhaps bodging a one by system on maybe a hill climb bike or a time trial bike, then you can sort of do it, but it will be a bodge. The main issues you've got is if you don't use a narrow wide chain ring with the longer teeth like we see here, there's a much greater risk that you will drop the chain without that front derailleur there. And also many rear derailleurs can work as a sort of bodged one by setup, but if they're not specifically designed to do so, then they will be less efficient uh, in terms of chain line efficiency throughout the whole range of the cassette. Installation of a single ring chain set is the same as installation of a double or triple chain set. So we'll assume you've got that in place. We'll also make the assumption that you've fitted your shifters and set up your brakes and got your shifting cable 
ready to be connected to the rear derailleur. If you're unsure of how to do any of these jobs, then fear not, because we do have videos that go into more detail on all those specific jobs, um, as it would make this one video too big if we included all of them here. It also takes into account people who might have different braking systems, such as hydraulic disc brakes, as we have here, or perhaps rim brakes, as they can also be found on one by group sets. If you are routing cables internally, one thing I would highly recommend though, is to use a routing kit. This is literally the best thing in the world. First, we're going to attach the rear derailleur and they attach much the same as a normal rear derailleur, but it's important to make sure that the clutch or lockout isn't engaged. So on Shimano rear derailleurs, we turn this lever down to turn the clutch off and SRAM and Campagnolo have a push button lockout. Next, we're going to bolt the rear derailleur onto the mech hanger here using a five mil Allen key. And note this little lip here on the hanger, that is what the B limit screw will press against. Next, you need to make sure the cable is pulled all the way through and that the head of the cable is properly locked and secured in the end of the shifter. And then you want to shift the shifter so that it goes in the smallest cog on the cassette. With your cable threaded through the guide, we're next gonna install this little bit of cable housing on the end. And then we're gonna thread the cable, firstly, through the barrel adjuster on the rear derailleur. With the cable through the barrel adjuster, we then thread it through the pinch bolt and clamp it in place. Also, if you're using a Shimano GRX rear derailleur like this, the bit of exposed cable between the barrel adjuster and the pinch bolt is covered by this little rubber housing to help protect it. So we're gonna thread that on first. As an aside, pliers can also be really useful at grabbing hold of the cable and helping you pull it all the way through. When it comes to adjusting the angle of a Shimano one by rear derailleur, it's not too dissimilar from a standard rear derailleur, but you will want to pay more attention to the B limit screw, as this will have a greater bearing on the overall shifting. As you shift up the cassette, and this is unique to one by rear derailleurs, you'll need to make sure that that top jockey wheel has enough clearance for the next gear so that it's not catching on it. Now to do this, you adjust the B limit screw. You turn it anti-clockwise to decrease the gap and clockwise to increase the gap. And usually this is done with a two millimeter Allen key. Next, we need to set the high and low limits on the rear derailleur. The limit screws limit the amount of movement that the rear derailleur can travel laterally. And so therefore, it stops the rear derailleur coming too far out, which would drag the chain potentially off the cassette and then into the stays here and damage your frame, or too far the other way and drag the chain into the spokes and potentially damage your wheel. We're first gonna adjust the high limit screw, which controls the movement on the bottom of the cassette, the smallest sprocket. And what we're looking to do is to get that top jockey wheel perfectly in line with that smallest cassette cog. And to do so, you can turn this limit screw with a two millimeter Allen key. And this is best done sitting behind it so that you can see that it's perfectly in line. You next want to repeat the process for the low limit screw by shifting the rear derailleur into the easiest sprocket, the largest sprocket on the cassette, and then turning the low limit screw clockwise and anti-clockwise to adjust it. Now, top tip, if you're using Shimano like we are here, then I'd recommend you have that upper jockey wheel perfectly in line with the largest sprocket at the back. If you're using SRAM, it's good to actually just put it a little bit beyond that largest sprocket and that enables you to have a dummy shift. So when you shift up past that biggest sprocket, it stops it just dropping it down a gear into your next, uh, well, next easiest gear. But don't go too far because you will defeat the purpose of the limit screw and then you could end up throwing your chain off the cassette and into the spokes. Also, it can cause your rear derailleur to catch on the spokes as well, which is also bad and you don't want that, so just be careful. We're now going to fit the chain, and the procedure for doing this is slightly different 
from if you're just doing a standard two by group set and that's because the derailleur has different proportions. So the technique to do it is to fit the chain around the largest sprocket at the back and then also round the chain ring, but we're not threading it through the derailleur. The purpose of this is to get the correct chain length before we connect both ends of the chain together. Now, with the chain threaded over the largest sprocket at the back and round the chain ring, but not through the rear derailleur. We want to then look at where the chain meets and then add an additional four link pins along. So if you see there, the length of this chain here is correct. We've got where the chain meets and then we count one, two, three, and then there's gonna be a fourth because I'm gonna connect it with a quick link. When you come to connect the chain, I often find it easier if you actually put the rear derailleur into the smallest sprocket as there's less chain tension then um, and it's just easier to connect both ends. And make sure you correctly thread it through your rear derailleur and it's not threaded through the wrong way and is catching on the little linkage pin in the middle of the cage. I've seen people do that. And also pay attention to the chain as well as some chains are uh, asymmetric. They have to be fitted in a certain direction, such as the Shimano chain. Quick and easy way on a Shimano chain to know if you've got it the right way around is the writing on the chain should be outward on the drive side. I'm just gonna use the quick link pliers to close the quick link as well. Now we have the chain installed, we want to make sure that the cable tension is correct and that the gears are properly indexed. To do this, turn the crank ideally with the bike in a stand like we have here, and then shift through the gears. If when you shift, the chain rubs on the next sprocket, it's likely that the cable tension is too high and therefore you'll need to loosen it slightly. If when you shift, the chain doesn't move uh, and usually just starts to make a clicking sound but doesn't shift into the next sprocket, your cable tension isn't high enough and you will have to increase it. To increase it, you simply turn the barrel adjuster uh, clockwise and tighten it slightly and to remove cable tension and to clockwise loosen it slightly. Usually this only takes a sort of quarter of a turn or half a turn at a time. Shouldn't need to adjust it a great deal. Keep playing around with the cable tension until you get it just right and you find that sweet spot. But a couple of troubleshooting things for you. If you find that no matter how much you shift, the rear derailleur doesn't move all the way up to the biggest cog on the back, and no matter how much you tighten the cable tension on the barrel adjuster, it just won't go, then the likelihood is that you just haven't pulled the cable through enough and you don't have enough sort of base level tension in the cable, in which case undo the retaining bolt for the cable and just make sure you've pulled it all the way through before retightening it. The other thing is that if when your gear change is a little bit sluggish from changing up or down from the biggest cog at the back to the next biggest cog, then what I'd suggest you do is actually just play around with the B limit screw and just nip it in a little bit tighter. If that's a little bit closer, bringing that jockey wheel a little bit closer to the cassette, then that will just make that gear shift a little bit sharper. Once you've followed all those steps, your gears should be working properly on your one by drivetrain. And all that there remains to do is to just check that the cable is properly secured and tightened. Trim it to length with a pair of cutters so that it's not too long. And then fit a ferrule on the end as well to protect it and stop it fraying. I hope you found this video useful. And if you have, please give it a thumbs up, help support the channel. And for more videos to do with bike maintenance and all things bike related tech, make sure you subscribe to the GCN Tech channel. 